Well, yeah, I think compost making is, is very important because it gives you an opportunity to get fertility back in. And um, uh, especially, like, if you don't have a, a farm <coughs> nearby to give you... And ultimately, that's unsustainable, really, to be you get taking in animal manure from somewhere else. We want to be really recycling all our own stuff. I don't know whether we all quite want to be, you know, using composting toilets yet. Um, making a good compost tea is not difficult, but it's easy to get it wrong. And I think the thing is to that you need to make enough of it at a time. You really need to fill up a box about a metre by a metre by a metre when you make compost. If you can sort of gather materials and put it all together in one go in a nice... Box. I use actually, I have off cuts of Kingspan roofing, which are insulated, and uh, that actually helps to really heat up the compost. Or you can just, uh, pallets, you know, four pallets tied together in a square, and it's so much better if it's under cover because it doesn't get all soggy. You know, most people have their compost down the back of the garden and it gets rain on it and it gets soggy and horrible. And uh, I'm lucky enough to have a space just inside the hay barn, which is handy, and I can go down with the bucket of kitchen waste. And my compost is so much better now that it's made under cover. In fact, sometimes it gets too dry. Um, Would you not have a problem with rats? Well, I do sometimes, yeah. Yeah. I do. I have a cat that I hate. Um, but she, 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 and she doesn't seem to make much impression on the rats, so I do yeah. sometimes resort to the blue sweeties. But, um, it's turning it, though. I find it's turning. You know, you've got a big pack and trying to turn, to aerate it. And then I tried in a book. Um, an old um, dustbin, and I tried to put a, a pipe in the middle of it, apparently with holes, and that has helped a tiny bit to aerate it all. I see. I don't think a dustbin but is big enough just, to heat up. No, it you know, actually needs the full things. meter squared. And then if you have pallets and they're tied together, when you want to turn it, what I have is like a three, three cubicles, if you like, made out of roughly pallet size, roughly a meter by meter. And it all comes to bits. They're all just tied together with bits of string and stuff and fence posts. I bang a fence posts into the ground and tie the pallets onto it. And then when I want to turn it, I just take all the pallets away and turf it into the next box and put the pallets back up. And actually, it isn't a problem because it has <coughs> fermented quite well. It has heated up and broken down quite a bit. And when you go to turn it, and it's not soggy and wet, it's easy enough to turn. I don't find turning is actually a big job. But... It, it's it's having a bit of a system, I think, really helps. Do you put all your kitchen waste onto that as well? Yeah. Right. Because I find one of the things that works really well for me to keep the rats at bay is to use the, the compost heap right there for the three areas yeah. for the kitchen, uh, for the, the garden waste. Yeah. And then to use... Um, the worm radio. Right? use converted wheelie bits with a tap oh, on the bottom. Right. Yeah. And, and they work really well for, you know, just for the kitchen waste. Yes. Sorry, so do you, what do you do with the... I've got two converted wheelie bins yeah. um, with a tap fit at the base of them. And a then, tap? Yeah, a tap at the base of the wheelie bin and then gravel, you know, that much gravel at the bottom, something like that. Some way of draining it. Oh, and yes, then yes. worms um, digesting the food on top of that. So that you just add the layers, you know, to keep your kitchen waste to, in a box maybe that size or half that size and then tip it out onto a sheet of newspaper, wrap it up and throw it in. And that'll keep the worms covered. They'll make their way up underneath as the as the bottom of the newspaper becomes moist, so you never you never with a situation where the food is exposed to the air for flies and odors and things like that, and yet the worms can work their way up through it. But you need enough wheelie bins to keep you going. We have two plus one of the you know the the Carberry oh, yeah. compost yeah. bins, which I find have a little hopper in the front for the rats to climb in and out. So they're not yeah. not great. Yeah. Um, but the, the, I try to keep that for you know citrus rinds and onions, which the worms apparently don't like. Okay. So for that type of thing, stuff that raw veg, stuff that the rats wouldn't really go for. But the two um, the two worm bins, I find that as long as I keep the application of food low enough, then the, the worms will keep up to date with it. Okay. But it, so I need to have enough of them. You know, if you have a, a bigger food production, like ideally I should have three or four rather than two okay. and the system that the rats can actually and do actually get into. Better off just not to have the one that they can get in and out of, even though it's only citrus. I think they've already gone for the worms. Oh, yes. you know, um, they love that. I think that's why they yeah, go into my compost exactly. I don't no, think they go in for the food. It's for the worms. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 If I find, yeah, I think so, because they're, yeah, you know, lovely and juicy. Ask any mole. <laughs> 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 um, and then uh, I find with the with the Carberry bins, and those compost bins, I've I've just consistently got really bad sludgy compost over oh, the years. Yeah, yeah, and my mother-in-law, who I always refer to it, you know, as a 
I'm an environmental consultant and I go to my mother-in-law to find out how to do really, um, worm bins properly because <laughs> she just does really well. Yeah. And I think what she does is just keeps um, rat poison beside it, which I don't particularly want to do. Yeah. And that keeps the rats at bay so the worms work in the bin. Okay. You know, which they don't mind because the rats can yeah. get But it must be possible to get a proper, a better quality compost. It must be. I'm yeah. sure if we were to Yeah, there's the eco shop in, Germany, in right. Wicklow um, yeah. sell plastic compost bins. Aren't there ones where you get a worm, um, a stainless steel thing you put underground that the rats can't get yeah. into, and then a bin on top of that? That's more a disposal unit you know, than composting unit, oh, frankly. It? Oh, so it, it gets rid of the food, okay. but mm -hmm. you don't really get to avail of all the nutrients oh, all, right. as much as yeah. you might like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just having more surface area for the worms within sealed wheelie bins or sealed okay, yeah, or the, the can of worms is um, is another one. It's a, a commercial system. Um, what else? Is there? Just having sufficient surface area. Oh yeah, for composting fiascos with the you know with the, the council bins mm -hmm. with those ones, I find it really good just to lift the lid. Um, I don't buck my nose, but you can if you want. And just to use that, use that sludgy mixture as a layer within a turned heap, within a, a garden compost heap. So when you're building the, the layer that you spoke, the, the, the one meter cubed, when you're building that, yeah, yeah. use your <coughs> composting fiascos if you have one for the kitchen garden waste, because it'll be so horrible and sludgy at that stage, the rats won't really want the food in it anyway. So put that in as a layer, a layer of that oh, stuff, yes. layer of grass clippings, layer of straw, yeah. layer of manure, you know, all of that in your aerobic heap. And the, the rats don't really want it at that stage. Okay.